we're so happy to have you here. Here are your announcements. Evening service every Wednesday, 6.30 p.m. Overflow Youth, Wednesday, 6.30 p.m. Intercessory Prayer, every Monday and Wednesday, 6 p.m. Adult Sunday School, every Sunday morning, 9.30 a.m. Fun, tonight at 5 p.m. p.m., the Perry Home. Please bring pre-filled Easter egg donations by April 2nd. We're so glad to have you here. Enjoy service. Amen. Isn't God good? <laughs> it's so good, man. Hallelujah. You know, I'm encouraged tonight. I really am. God's got something special in store for everybody that's here. And we've got a very special speaker tonight. Miss Jessica Valencia is going to share with us. Yes. Yeah, she's been working on her credentialing and has finished her third year of Bible school and has put in to receive her license to be a minister of the gospel. Come on, can we give her a hand for that? Yes, amen. And so God is doing some incredible things through leadership and promoting and open doors for leadership. How do you know if you're faithful, God will open a door for you? He sure will. It may not be the door that you thought and imagined that it might be, but it, I can tell you that it will be greater than what you thought or imagined it might be. Because God, God is the God of greater. Amen? Amen? He's the God of greater. I was there with my friend John. I said, you know, it's, a, it's an interesting thing what you say about yourself. Last night I was uh, just in bed praying. God said, now call yourself blessed. You ever done that? And I said, okay, I'm blessed. He said, no, no, no. You got to call yourself blessed. And I thought about that for a second. And I said, okay, God. Brad Anthony Perry is blessed. He said, he said, keep going. Brad Anthony Perry in body is blessed. He said, keep going. Brad Anthony Perry is blessed in his spirit. Amen. Brad Anthony Perry is blessed in his soul. Amen. Brad Anthony Perry's finances is, bl is blessed. Amen. Brad Anthony Perry's wife named Shelby K. Perry is blessed in Jesus' name. Amen. And for about 30 minutes last night, that's all he had me do. You got to call yourself blessed. Last night, Brad Anthony Perry, pastor of Living Springs Church, called you blessed. God called you blessed. Come on. You blessed tonight. It's time to act like that. Hallelujah. It may have been a hard day, but we got a, a great message tonight that Christ is still the king. Amen. amen. He is still amen on his throne, and there's nothing that the enemy can do about it because he put his foot on his neck in the middle of his dominion and said, now it's mine. Amen. He owns it all. Hallelujah. Amen. But if you don't receive it, if you don't act like you got it, you'll never have it. Tonight, as this message is preached by this young lady, you got to receive or you won't get it. Amen. When somebody's trying to put a, a, a fish in your basket, let them. You might have something to eat on later. Amen. So tonight, we're going to worship the Lord. And I'm so glad my friend John is going to help us sing for the first time. Can we give John a hand? Yeah, John. Also known as John John. We love John here. He's a, he's a handy guy to have around, an anointed man. God's given him favor since he's been faithful. God's opened a door for him tonight because he's been faithful. That's how it works. Hallelujah. So, and thank you to all of our guests who are here tonight. Thank you, guys. Thank you for watching by live. We love you. God loves you. Let's enjoy service tonight together. We'll do an offering at the very end and some explanation about that. But for now, let's worship with Jessica and John. stand and worship tonight.
the goodness of God. All my life you have been faithful. All my life you have been so, so good. Every breath that I am able, I will see the goodness of God, oh, I'm the fruit of the goodness of God. I really feel like this next song, God wants us to sing on the altar. So if you want to sing that, y'all can sing it in the back.
this goes on and on, and I will sing of your goodness forevermore. Worthy is your name, Jesus. You deserve the praise. Worthy is your name. Worthy is your name, Jesus. Your glory fill this place. You alone deserve our praise. You're the name above all names. Be exalted now in the heavens. As your glory fill this place. You alone deserve our praise. You're the name above all names. Be exalted now. As your glory fills this place, you alone deserve our praise. You're the name above all names. Be exalted now in the heaven. As your glory fills this place, you alone deserve our praise. You're 
the name above all names. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you,
so much for this time of worship where we've really experienced your presence, God. How sweet is this presence that we've gotten to experience, God. What a refresher. Lord, help us stay focused on you. Spirit, Evening service every Wednesday, 6.30 p.m. Overflow Youth, Wednesday, 6.30 p.m. Intercessory Prayer every Monday and Wednesday, 6 p.m. Adult Sunday School every Sunday morning, 9.30 a.m. March 25th at Steve's meeting, March 25th at 1 p.m., the Perry Home. Please bring pre-filled Easter egg donations by April 2nd. We're so glad to have you here. Enjoy service. You stand wrong stand. Woo! Good evening, everyone. What a great time in worship. And isn't it so interesting how the topic of tonight's sermon is also worship? <laughs> I didn't orchestrate that on purpose. No, not me. Um, it is a blessing to be able to speak tonight um, to start this series that we're going to be going through these next few weeks. Um, God has really put it on my heart on how to talk about this subject because it is so delicate. It is so beautiful and all of this just, it's amazing, guys. I'm excited for what God is going to be saying through me tonight. So before we really get into it, let's pray because we all know Jessica needs Jesus. Whew. Oh, Heavenly Father, what a blessing it is to be able to serve you, Lord. What a blessing it is to be able to surrender everything, God, and just to just to release control. Lord, you have given me these words, and I just ask in Jesus' name that I know that there are people in this congregation tonight that need to hear this. 
So, Lord, we love you so much. We love your word. We love you. We love your son. Amen. Amen. All right. So I'm just going to jump right into this real quick. I didn't tell you about these Royston because this is a speed run kind of. So Psalm 103, bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Um, Psalm 104. Bless the Lord, O my soul, O Lord, my God. You are very great. You are clothed with splendor and majesty. Psalm 98. Oh, sing to the Lord a new song, for he has done marvelous things. Psalm 95. Oh, come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. All of this lovely worship and praise. Without the word worship, and this is just one book of the Bible, and a couple of chapters in that but it is mentioned from the beginning all the way to the end worship and it's so amazing because it's it's a constant as a person who is not very fond of change I love things that are constant (laughs) and worship is constant it doesn't it doesn't go away and so um, with worship being everywhere in the bible I guess the next question would be what is worship or is the first question, what is worship? And you'll hear me say that within the next couple of weeks quite a few times because worship, it's, it's a word. <laughs> and it has a definition, but it's a very broad definition because the world likes to define it as um, you putting whatever God is, God, because lowercase g, <laughs> in front in front of you as a priority and for us it is God is our priority it's who we focus on and so you'll hear me say that many times with different answers because the word is broad and it can be defined but it's not necessarily exclusive to one definition and so the definition we're going to use for tonight's message is worship is the response to seeing him him being Jesus. And so um, a little bit about worship. <laughs> worship, it's not built on a foundation of feeling because we feel things, but it's not about us. It's, it has nothing to do with what us is. It's about him. Um, it's not about the atmosphere. So we see these really big churches, and it's great. They got the cool lighting. They got the fog machines. And I'm not going to diss our lovely little lights that we got in here. I love them. But it's not about the lights. They're, they're fancy. They can stay, you know, but it's not about them. It's about God. And it's not about the lyrics or melodies that we sing. Crazily enough, we'll talk more about that in the coming weeks for sure. But in Matthew 15, 8, it says, it's, um, ooh, this is Jesus speaking to the Pharisees, quoting Isaiah when they tried to call him and his disciples out for not washing their hands. It was a tradition in those days for you to wash your hands before your meals. I mean, I still do it, not out of tradition, because I'm just a germaphobe. But um, it says this, this people honors me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. Lyrics and melodies are just that. If we're singing meaningless words, then why are we singing? And so I lost my place, y'all. I lost it. So when we worship, worship comes out of a place of having an encounter with Jesus, a transformation. We talk about it a lot, salvation. We have that transforming moment with God. And we completely flip it around. If you don't know what the word transformation means, it means change. (laughs) Well, I say I don't like change, right? But it had to happen. It has to happen, right? And so this encounter, though, this particular encounter brings both death and life at the same time. Death to your flesh and life and union with him, right? And so I'm going to talk about Saul a little bit, so I'm going to turn to 1 Samuel 10, 5. It's um, King Saul, sorry, not um, Saul that turns into Paul. I know it's confusing sometimes. Um, So Saul was this dude. He was a Benjamite. I'm sorry if I use the word dude. I used this story a couple weeks ago. I'm not going to try to hide that. Um, Saul was this man. He was a Benjamite. Um, His dad was this guy named 
Kish. It was a cool name, so I thought I'd mention it. And he had money. Saul was this really nice looking guy. It says it in the Bible, guys. If the Bible says he's handsome, I'm going to believe it. And he ends up being anointed as king, right? But before that, a little bit before that, um, his dad sent him and, his, and a servant to go and find these donkeys that were lost. And in this, they got like three towns over, and they were like, I got to go home. My dad's going to be worried about me, whatever about the donkeys. I think my dad values me a little bit more, maybe. And so, But his servant was like, don't do that. There's a seer in this town over right here. A seer in those days was a prophet, so I'm going to switch over to that word prophet because I'm more comfortable with that. A seer was a prophet, and he was like, hey, there's this prophet at this town next right here. If we just be patient, go to him. I bet he could tell us where these donkeys are. And he was like, okay. So they go to this. Um, I cannot pronounce that name. I'm not going to try. <laughs> they went to this town, and up at this gate, there was a guy standing there. Lo and behold, Samuel. And see, Samuel had already kind of had a hint at what was about to happen. Because God had already warned him about, hey, you're going to meet this guy. He's a Benjamite. His name is Saul. You're going to meet him, and that's going to be the new king of Israel. He's going to deliver deliver my people from the, from the Philistines. And so he meets him, and he's like, I know who you are. You don't know who I am yet. It's great. They have a big feast happening, a big sacrifice happening that night. So he's like, hey, stay. Stay with me for the night. Tomorrow morning you can leave. I'll tell you where your donkeys are. And he's like, okay. So they both stay the night. And so the next day they wake up. Samuel turns to Saul, tells him to tell his servant, hey, go on for a little bit. I'm going to talk to Saul for a minute. And he talks to Saul and he tells him a whole bunch of stuff that's about to happen. First of all, you're the anointed king of Israel. Um, you're going to be the first. Just letting you know that that's what God has on your life. And this is what's going to happen next. So he gives us plenty of verses of, um, of prophecy was of what was going to happen next. And essentially what's going to happen is phase one. He was going to meet these three guys. This story isn't super exclamation mark, if you know what I mean. It's not very important to the story, but I'm going to tell it anyway. Um, it, he meets these three guys. One of them, he said you're, he's going to have three goats. The other one, he's going to have three bushels of bread. Um, not the right word for that. Um, and the third one is going to have this wineskin. The dude with the bread is going to give you a loaf. That's the word, a loaf. And he's going to go on, and you're going to go on to the next town. So reading, starting at verse 5, it says, After that you shall come to the Gebeath Elohim, where there is a garrison of the Philistines there. And there, as soon as you come to the city, you will meet a group of prophets coming down from the high place with harp, tambourine, flute, and lyre before them. Worship team, prophesying. Then the Spirit of the Lord will rush upon you, and you will prophesy with them and be turned into another man. Now, when these signs meet you, do what your hand finds to do, for God is with you. And then we're going to skip down to verse 9 there. When he turned his back to leave Samuel, he gave, God gave him another heart. And all these signs came to pass that day. When they came to Gibeah, behold, a group of prophets met him. And the, pro and the Spirit of God rushed upon him, and he prophesied among them. And when all who knew him previously saw how he prophesied with the prophets, the people said to one another, What has come over the son of Kish? Is Saul also among the prophets? And a man of the place answered, Who is their father? Therefore, it becomes a prophet. So, why did I use that story for transformation? Because worship was super essential in Saul's transformation. That was one of the first times he felt the spirit of the Lord, as according to this Bible anyway. <laughs> I'm not going to say that's facts for sure, but the Bible is truth, just saying. Anyway, so, <laughs> and the guy after him himself, you know, David, also had worship pretty down to a T as well. He was after God's heart, right? And so how do you become this worshiper like David or like Saul? And how do we continue to dig deeper in our relationship with Christ? 
Well, there's going to be three main factors here. Attention, surrender, and intention. And that last one can be put at the beginning or the end. It's pretty important, though. So attention. Guys, we live in 2023. I was about to say 2024. <laughs> Those future, future eyes there. There are distractions aplenty. I'm sure that if phones were a thing, it would have been in the Little Mermaid's song. Um, iPhones have, you have access to the whole world. You have access to every bit of news, except for a couple countries, because, you know, me. But you have all this access to this. This is such a distraction for me personally. I had to delete everything. I think I have Pinterest on there. I couldn't even download a block game. Because I'll be in the middle of prayer and being like, I didn't beat my high score. Mm. Anyway, <laughs> I can't, I'm not even going to lie. That was a thought I had the other day. It's very sad. <laughs> you got money. Chasing jobs, corporate, corporate ladder is there. It's a big pressure on the generations coming and the generations now. Unfortunately, that's one of those constant things is money. Busyness. Busy person, guys. I get home at 9 o'clock every night, wake up at 5 every morning. If I don't intentionally set aside, set aside time for God, it doesn't happen. And then there's worry. A couple of weeks ago in one of the worship um, sets that we did, I remember this as I was writing these down, rewriting it because my handwriting sucks. Um, but I just remember what I said about worry, and it wasn't me because I was worried about stuff at that moment. It was God. When we worry, we are, we are worshiping what we're worrying about, that situation. We're not worshiping God at that point. We almost kind of deflate him some because we're so worried we're trying to fix it ourselves, but instead of giving it to the one that really can fix it, right? So in Romans 8, 5 through 6, it says, for those who live according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh. But those who live according to the spirit set their minds on the things of the spirit. For to set the mind on the flesh is death, but to set the mind on the spirit is life and peace. It's so important to pay attention to God, to focus on the Lord. And it's not just in the times where we're kneeled at the altar. It's not just the, in the times where our hands are raised up praising God. No, it's in the moment we wake up to the moment we go to sleep. And hopefully while we're asleep, we're still thinking about him. <laughs> like It's one of those things. Constantly, God, is this you? Just making sure. <laughs> Hold on a minute. God, is that you? Yeah. Okay. We're going to keep going. Having God and paying attention and focusing on him is essential to life in general. And so then we go on, we speak of peace a little bit more. It says Isaiah 26, 3, it says, you keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on you because he trusts you. Isn't it beautiful to have a God that we can trust to hold our peace because he does not fall over, he does not fail, and he will not give up on us. It's just really easy to pay, to pay attention or to focus on, okay, what am I going to eat tonight after service? <laughs> you know how many times I have to fight that thought off? And I'm the worship pastor, guys? <laughs> uh, no, it's not good. Don't worry. I'll call myself out, too. I didn't do it tonight. I don't do it all the time. That was one time. <laughs> I was really craving wing stop. Anyway, <laughs> the next part is surrender. We have attention, we've got to focus on God, and then we surrender, or then, but it's not in particular order, guys. Just surrender. Very big part. Very big part of worship. Yeah. We've talked about surrender probably every Sunday and Wednesday in this church because it's that important. It's that important. So in Romans 12, 1 and, th one and 2, I lost it. I'm going to read it off the Sky Bible. I appeal to you, therefore, brothers, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, 
holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind, that by testing you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. Surrender, guys. When we surrender, a sort of sacrifice happens. We, we let go of the control that we think we have when we surrender. To surrender is to let go, but it's also to receive. You let go of your fleshly desires, of your temporary happiness, that thing that you just can't seem to get away from. This is the moment that you let go of it, and you receive Jesus. You receive freedom. You receive salvation. You receive more than just happiness. You receive eternal joy. You receive eternal joy. It's my favorite part about worship is that. No matter how sad I am about something, no matter how what I'm going through that week, the moment that I stop doing whatever I'm doing and I worship and I pray and I tell God, hey, this is yours. I can't do this on my own. I'm weak. I'm but a human. I have GERD. It doesn't work, God. Help me. <laughs> the weight lifts off. So Galatians 2.20. I know I got a lot of scripture, guys. Listen, I told you worship is all the way through the Bible. You got to. So Galatians 2.20, I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. In the life I now live in in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. I think that's enough to answer the question of why do we surrender and why it's important. But I got a couple more points, so... Just going to go ahead and let y'all know that, that though, enough, it's enough right there. <laughs> Just going to pause, pause for effect. Anyway, <laughs> so um, that n- the next part of my notes that I have, it says, why do we surrender? I didn't even realize that when I was writing it down, that like Galatians 2.20, you know, solves that for us. <laughs> but we're going to go on to some other points that we have here. And I say because Jesus did it. We're meant to live like Jesus. We're meant to use him as the example of how we live our lives. And so in Mark 14, 35 through 36, this is where Jesus is praying in the the Garden of Gethsemane. Said it right? Mm. This was a moment of super deep surrender and crying out to the Father for Jesus. And it says, in going a little farther, he fell on the ground and he prayed, that if it were possible, the hour might pass from him. And he said, Abba, Father, all things are possible for you. Remove this cup from me, yet not what I will, but what you will. And so in Jesus crying out, he still understood what God's will was. Jesus knew what was going to happen next, and he still cried out to God, let this cup pass from me, but your will be done. That's that but in all capitals, but your will be done. Jesus surrendered. We should too. Number three of my why do we surrender? We don't stay the same. Well, we can't stay the same and expect growth and change to happen. It's an oxymoron. Let's stay the same but expect change. That just doesn't work. It's like trying to break a hundred bill and expecting a uh, hundred back. You know, this doesn't work. It's like I have, <laughs> it breaks my heart because I have friends, for example, that have that mentality. I go to church on Sunday. I go on Wednesday nights. And, you know, I gave my life to Jesus. and But I'll keep partying and getting drunk every weekend. For right now, this is what I want to do. And they'll put deadlines on things. It's funny. I, but I put my future in God's hands. But like, not right now, though. Don't worry about it. Or it's even worse because it's, there's, there's just, mm, I spend all my money on things that are unnecessary. I'll go gamble the rest of it. But God, you have my finances in your hands. 
we have to be intentional with our lives as well. And that's what we're going into, intention. (laughs) Proverbs 24, 8. Whoever plans to do evil will be called a schemer. That's harsh. Calm down. (laughs) While that is true in this context, if we aren't being or if we don't choose to intentionally, which means on purpose, intentionally means on purpose, if we do not choose to intentionally come to God with pure intentions, it's hard to hear from God, it's hard to obey him, and it's hard to live a godly lifestyle. So my question is, are you making worship about you or are you making worship about God? It's super easy to make it about us. Listen, I was once that girl that was serving on a pulpit, not now, (laughs) back in the day, that would go because she knew she was a good singer. Big head, guys, bigger than it is now. (laughs) She knew she was a good singer. She wanted the attention. Listen, there were a few guys that went to that church, and Jessica knew she was going to get their attention if they knew she could sing. (laughs) That wasn't about God at all. It was purely about me. It doesn't matter the words that I sang. It doesn't matter any of that because I wasn't making it about God. Or how about whenever we go to a church and we're just like, hold on, what's that person doing this time? They're raising their hands. I'll raise my hand. They're jumping. All right. They did it. I did it. Okay. I'm good, God. That's it. (laughs) That's all I'm going to do for this. Once again, we're making it more about ourselves. Worship is a lot more simpler than we think it is. But we're human, and we mess things up sometimes. So God forgives us. Anyway, let's go to the next one. Matthew 6, 5 through 8. And when you pray, you must not be like the hypocrites, for they love to stand and pray in the synagogues, And at the street corners that they may be seen by others. Truly, I say to you, they have received their reward. But when you pray, go into your room and shut the door and pray to your father who is in secret. And your father who sees in secret will reward you. And when you pray, do not heap up empty phrases as the Gentiles do. For they think that they will be heard for their many words. Do not be like them, for your father knows what you need before you ask him. That's about prayer. (laughs) But prayer and worship go side by side. Can't have one without the other. Because in worship, you pray, and when you pray, you worship. And we'll talk about that more in a couple of weeks. So this next part is a challenge. I like to challenge myself, so I like to challenge people while I do that. Um, Just in your daily life, just be asking God, okay, Lord, am I making this about myself? Or am I making it about you? When people see me at my work, If they see me at the grocery store, God, is it about me or is it about you? Do they see that light, that little light that shines that we're supposed to not put in the bushel to hide whenever I'm just living my daily life with you, Lord? And then another question to ask you in any action that you take is, is it pleasing God? We worship to please God. So it's partially a big reason why people don't understand why we worship. Because we are God-pleasing people. (laughs) And we love to hear that God is pleased with what we are doing. But it takes things to do that. It takes sacrifice. It takes surrender. It takes doing things with intention. It takes paying attention and focusing on God. All that will come together and it'll develop a heart of worship. 
I didn't know what that meant whenever that got prophesied over me one day. They were like, you're going to have such a heart of worship, and you're going to sing and do this and that. And I'm just like, okay, I know I'm going to sing. That's great. What's, what's a heart of worship? A heart of worship is a heart that is 100%. 100%. Focused, surrendered, and intentional with God. Because he's intentional with us. He's focused on us. He's not surrendered to us, but that's not the point. (laughs) So we're going to go back into a time of worship, actually, if that's okay with y'all. We're going to go back into worthy is your name. Because I feel like that's a really great job at worshiping God, those words in that song. But it's not just about the words. A while ago when we were up here, God told me to do that because he was wanting to show me something. Y'all really want to worship. Y'all want to be worshipful people. Y'all, a lot of y'all already are. <laughs> so y'all love to do it anyway. So we're going to get back into this moment if y'all don't mind. Y'all coming back up here. We, I'm going to ask John to come back up here and help us out. Oh, Jesus. Pray. 
You know, God, he doesn't need anything, but he desires everything in you. Think about that a second. That God is just not some two-dimensional, plain God. He desires your worship. (laughs) He desires your love. Amen? Yes, he desires your presence, you being in the moment with him in worship. Yes. Such a good message tonight. Amen. God doesn't need anything, but he desires you. He doesn't need you to be him, but you need him to be you. <laughs> That's right. We need God every single day, every single moment. We need God. We need Jesus. We need His Spirit. We need preachers preaching. Amen. Amen. We need evangelists out there preaching. Amen. We need missionaries on the mission field. Amen. We need worshipers in the church. Amen. We need givers giving too. We need givers giving. God doesn't need anything from you, but He desires it from you. Amen. Remember I say we're going to take up an offering? Isn't that a great little segue right there? <laughs> God wants you to be a blessing. Why? Because he wants to bless you. It's a, it's a direct correlation. That means it's a promise. That means it's an surety that as you are a giving person, God will bless your life. And he'll do it in ways that impress you. He'll do it in ways that you can't even imagine. He, like the scripture says, he knows before you even ask. He knows before you're even going to give. Amen. Tonight this offering was going to be for something, but I, I, I'm changing that a little bit because we want to make it about worship. And so tonight's offering is going to go to our worship pastor. And we're going to bless her tonight. Amen. Didn't she do such a good job? Let's give Pastor Jessica a hand for that good job she did. Thank you, Jessica. Thank you very much. And the labor is, amen, worthy of that labor. So God wants to bless you tonight because you've given freely. Amen. It's time for you to receive. So stretch your hands towards this young lady. Amen. We're going to pray over her tonight. Pray over this ministry that God has, this new chapter in her life. I messaged her today. I said, you're going to do great tonight. She said, thanks, I'm kind of nervous, all this stuff, right? I said, God's with you. He is starting tonight a new chapter in your life. And it shows because God's with you, Jessica. He's with you in this. Always has been, always will be. Father, I thank you for this this daughter of heaven. Man, this this sweet, precious daughter of the king. (laughs) Ha, 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 ha. Thank you, Lord, for the anointing on our life, God, that only would ever grow and mature, Father God, that only, Lord Jesus, would honor you. 
I thank you for her heart to worship you, not just with her words, God, but with her spirit. Ah, as the word says, in spirit and truth, she worships you, Lord. Thank you, Father God, that she does that with all of her heart. She's doing it with all of her life, God, every part of her life. I think she says, God, is yours. I surrender it to you, Lord, that you can have this. God, you take this. You bless my life, God. So I, in the name of Jesus, with you, sister, along with our congregation, say, God bless you. God bless you. God pour his blessings on you. God pour his favor on you. God pour his Holy Spirit on you. God open doors for you in the name of Jesus. God just do work in her that only you can do. Move in her life in great and powerful ways. I thank you that her eyes are wide open, Lord God, for what you have next. That she's not blinded by flesh, but God, she's following the Spirit. Amen. She's following the Spirit of the Lord. Amen. I call her feet beautiful because she brings the, the good news everywhere that she goes in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, Father God, for that anointing on her life. I just call her blessed. I call her ministry for years and years and years and years. Just blessed of the Lord. Yes, God, that she's yours and yours alone. She makes no covenant with anyone else but you, God. Amen for the blood, amen, that's set her free. And the blood that she'll preach about it from Jesus himself that'll set the captive free. The blood of Jesus that she'll sing about that will set the worshiper free. <laughs> God says, I'm, I'm not done with you. I'm just, I'm just getting started. I'm not done with you. I'm just getting started with you. Hey! Yay! Yes, God. Thank you for the deeper anointing. The deeper anointing come. That she knows that she's a minister. Not just by title. Oh, but God, she receives it by nature. By the Spirit of God. By the nature of Christ Jesus. I thank you, Lord God. For a fullness in this. In this calling. That she accepts it, God. No more running, the Lord says. No more halfway. God says it's time to be all in. <laughs> it's time to be all in. It's time to be all in. It's time to be all in. Amen. It's time. It's time in the name of Jesus, Father, and I thank you for this upon our lives. Thank you for destiny and fulfillment in Jesus' name. Give the Lord some praise. Amen. 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 Thank you, Lord. So we're, we call this offering blessed tonight. Because it's going to a great, great cause, a great person. Amen. So God bless you as you give tonight. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. You know, the Lord doesn't want us to be in a rush. <clears throat> and one of the keys that I think that God's establishing in these services um, is that we, yes, we follow order, but the orders come from Him. And so it, it takes time to hear from heaven sometimes to get orders. And that's with our lives too. And I would encourage you tonight. If you feel like your life's a little bit out of order, there's just a few things that you're struggling with and, and your life's a little bit out of order, God says, I can, I can put order back into your life if you'll let me. And he'll establish himself in your life because you're letting him put order back into your heart. Because wherever your heart's at, that's where you'll be. And if you'll let God be the king of it, king of that heart inside of you, He'll take you down a path that's full of his life, his love. Surrender was the word tonight. Yeah. It's repentance and obedience that keeps us in the will of God. Repentance and obedience. So let's pray that prayer of repentance right now. Father, forgive us for sometimes we don't know what we're doing. 
we're trying to do it our way. God, but forgive us tonight for trying to do it our way. As we come to worship you, Lord, I pray that you can teach us to do it your way. That worship would open our eyes, that your word would open our hearts to do it your way. To do it God's way. In God's time, in your time, Lord. Not my time. Now say, say this with me. God, it's not in my time. It's in your time. God, it's not in my will. It's in your will. Let these things be done in my life. In Jesus' name. Lord, let it be so. If you got a call of ministry on your life, let it be so. But in God's time. Just enjoy the ride. Everybody, want to get, everybody wants to get to the end so fast. God's saying, enjoy the journey. It's a beautiful thing. The things that in, in the journey are what teach us how to get to the end. The promotion is because we walked it out. Amen. Not because we slept it out. Not because it took a time out. It's because we said, God, I'm all in with you. Right? I'm in. I'm not out, God. I'm in. I'm all in. Amen. And that's where Jesus is doing the best work, I believe, in the church. He's saying to us, be all in. Be all in. Be all in. And if you'll just walk all in, God says, I will take your life to places, man. I will do some things. I'll let you preach. Is that right? That's right. That's right. Hmm? Thank you, Jesus. Be all in, church. Don't be in a rush. Take time to talk to God. You're not that busy. You're not that busy. He doesn't need anything from us, but we need everything from him. Lord, we thank you. Jesus taught the disciples to pray this way. Say it with me. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our, our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses. We forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, power, glory forever. Amen. That's it. That's it. That's it. <laughs> and if you'll do that every day, God will have something in store for you. God bless you guys tonight. Thank you again, Jessica, Pastor Jessica, for preaching that incredible message. Yeah. Thank you so much for joining us. Looking forward to next Wednesday night. She's got it. And um, thank you, Lord God, for you being here tonight. Thank you, every one of you. Yeah, it's important that we're apart. Together. Yeah. Someone said you say together in Espanol. Say it again. Juntos en Cristo. Amen. Amen. Say, say it with me. Juntos en Cristo. Together in Christ. <laughs> Give the Lord one more applaud. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Thank you for watching by Facebook tonight. God bless you. Pray blessings over all your families in Jesus' name.